Amen. We're good friends. Amen. And um, if we have to spend time talking about that, I wouldn't have time to go on with the message tonight. But I am I'm very thankful to God that I have a friend like him, Heather. Heather has been, I know, since he was a little tight there. <laughs> and um, she's been so adorable, adorably sweet. And Amen. I'm thankful she's been taking care of me. And these three kids, it's a, it's a privilege to be around them. Amen. It's a privilege to be around each one of them. They are wonderful kids. And I think they, some of that must have rubbed off from their grandfather. That's <laughs> 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 but a great Amen. grandfather too. Amen. But um, honestly, I am thankful to God for them. Uh, my stay in the States here is very short, but I've been very, very busy. I'm not in the best of health. I yeah. Nobody wants to believe that I'm 69 years old, but I am 69. I still don't believe and a, and a few a few weeks, because the 10th of July I was 69 years old. <laughs> and um, to tell you a little more about me, some of you may know, on, well, I'm from Trinidad, it's the uh, last island down the Caribbean. We're just about seven miles away from Venezuela. And Venezuela is the, the country down there that is, well, you know Venezuela has been suffering from socialism. Mm -hmm. So just try to understand, you know that don't, you need not to let America go into socialism. Amen. Because you can see a good example of what's happening in Venezuela. Yeah. That is what socialism does to a country. Um, I have a, a ministry down there. I'm a Sovereign Grace Baptist, Landmark Mission Baptist. Uh, and I, I, I really don't have anybody to fellowship with because what happens there is that most of the people who claim to be Baptists, they aren't really Baptists. Right. Sometimes they come to the States here and they pretend that they are Baptists. I know they're, they're not. Right. <laughs> so we have a ministry going there, down there for quite some time and we have come, we have come come up with a situation where we are somewhat beginning to outgrow where we're keeping service and that is in my home in the garage here. I fix up the garage kind of nice and we meet there and we have a, a problem that has been developing for some time where we need to get more space. Another thing I was thinking about since I am no spring chicken <laughs> I can die any minute and I wouldn't want for the church to finish when I die. Now we have people in the church, I have Christopher Paul who can help out, who helps out. We have my son Paul also, he helps out and right now he's shouldering the entire responsibility because Christopher was in a wreck just about two Mondays ago and uh, he can't do anything. His car is totally folded up. I mean the whole back of the car came to the middle of the car. Uh, I've never seen an accident. It's a good thing he alone was in the car, not his wife and kids yeah. too. So, we have people to help them. In case anything happens to me, I know I've been praying for continuity. Yeah. And continuity will come without any problem for the church if they have their own place to, to fellowship in. So that's why I'm here in the States trying to raise some money to help out to purchase this building. It's costing us about $80,000. It sounds like a huge amount, and it is a huge amount. But God has already blessed us with $20,000. Amen. So we're looking forward to, some of the brethren have promised that they would help, but as I told one of, someone this evening, I said, only when it materializes, then you can be certain that it happened. So I'm looking for some personal support too, but that is secondary. What is priority right now is to get the funds for this building. So if there's any way you can help, yeah. if you cannot help financially, I mean, you have the same master that I have. Praise and you can take us before the Lord the same way we can take each other. Amen. So pray for us. And um, I, I expect that the Lord is going to fill that need. So just be praying for us and as God gives grace on him, as he give us grace, we, I trust that we will be able to raise that money and have our own place and have our own place of fellowship and be free from any kind of that. I, I don't want to leave the church in any debts or anything. That's why. Amen. As a matter of fact, with my age, there's no way I can get a loan. So that's what, one of the reasons why I never even attempted to get a loan. I know I wouldn't get it. So, um, tell you a little bit about the country. The country is a, is a independent republic. 
We have been, been we have been a part of uh, Britain for quite some time, as you notice the English that I speak. It has a little different accent from American, and uh, we are more British English. Um, our island is like we have a twin island country, Trinidad and Tobago. We have a population of about 1.3 million. Recently, we have had about 100,000 Venezuelans coming across our country. We are just seven miles away from Venezuela. So we've been having some problems in the country also. Our economy is down in the pits too. But see what, I know that God is in control and He will run things and somehow Amen. He always works out things for His own people. Amen. You know, so by God's grace, I expect everything will be fine. Um, I've been very, very busy since I've been in the States here. I am tired, but by God's grace, I am hoping to continue until I I'm able to next week Thursday, Lord's willing, to fly out back to Memphis and then on to where I live in, in Trinidad. So there, there, there beloved here, it's kind of tough on me. I can't think as I usually think. I know I'm growing old. And the reason um, I'm using a computer here to preach to is mainly because my eyes are not the best in the world. Mm -hmm. And with the fonts, I can increase my fonts and I'm able to see better and be able to read out of it and preach better. So hopefully by the Lord's grace, everything's going to be fine. I know some of you may have any questions. You may have a question or two. And of course, I can't think about what your questions will be. But if you do have at the end of these things, when we're together fellowshipping, probably you can ask me whatever you want to and I'll be more than happy to give you an answer as to what you might be asking about. Um, I want to preach on the subject tonight, uh, seeking, sustaining, and securing the sheep. Amen. And for my text, I'd like for us to turn to Ezekiel chapter 34, please. The book of Ezekiel chapter 34. And let me see what time is it so I know how long to preach. Yeah, you just keep going. I am not long-winded. I usually preach half an hour. I wish some preachers can do that. <laughs> <laughs> And I, hopefully I won't have the kids falling asleep on me. In Ezekiel chapter 34, I am going to read from verse 11. It says, For thus said the Lord God, Behold, I, even I, will both search my sheep and seek them out. As a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep that are scattered, so will I seek out my sheep, and will deliver them out of all places, where they have been scattered in the cloudy and dark day. And I will bring them out from the people and gather them from the countries and will bring them to their own land and feed them upon the mountains of Israel by the rivers and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them in a good pasture and upon the high mountains of Israel shall they fall be there shall they lie in a good fold, and in a fat pasture shall they feed upon the mountains of Israel. I will feed my flock, and I will cause them to lie down, said the Lord God. I will seek that which was lost, and bring again that which was driven away, and will bind up that which was broken, and will strengthen that which was sick. But I will destroy the fat and the strong. I will feed them with judgment. Our Father, our God, we come before your throne of grace, O Lord. Seeking unction, Lord. You know how I feel, God. You know my health, what it is. You know everything about me, O God. But my purpose, O God, is to glorify your name, Lord. Yes. My purpose is that the saints be edified and encouraged, O Lord. I pray, God and Father, Lord, that you will speak to the hearts of each one. May the word of God find well and room in the hearts of God, even as we trust that your spirit, Lord, would open eyes and open ears and open hearts, O God, that they might be edified by your word, Lord, be encouraged by your word, knowing that our salvation lies in the hands of the omnipotent God, Amen. who has promised, Lord, to seek us, to secure us, Lord, and to sustain us. Be merciful unto us, Lord. We bless your most holy name, and we thank you for every blessing, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 
you find that within the pages of the Old Testament, there are many, many comforting accounts of God's promises to the nation Israel. Yes. Now, since all scripture is profitable for doctrine, it is profitable for reproof, for correction, for instructions and righteousness, then all scriptures is relevant to us. Amen. And we can also claim this wonderful promise yes. that God has shared with his people, the nation Israel. Much comfort can be had by us through reading the word of God, seeking out the promises that God has made to his people, yes. and because knowing that he's our God, that he's our Father, because of this, we too can rest comfortable in the promises that he has made to his people. Yeah. We can trust these promises, for we know that his promises are ye and amen. Yeah. But comfort that we are to receive from the word of God, this comfort can only be had if you're born again. Right. If you're not born again, the word of God is not going to have much meaning to you. You are going to study the word sometimes. You are going to even memorize the word sometimes. But it is purely from a humanistic view. And the comfort, the blessings that you're supposed to get in studying these promises of God, it will mean nothing to you. It is only God's Holy Spirit. He is the only one who can comfort us and convince us of the authenticity of these promises that God has for His people. Amen. Here we find that God is using Ezekiel to bring comfort to God's sheep throughout the ages, not just for then, but throughout the ages. Right. And as we look at the passage in Ezekiel, let us see how it can be tonight applied to us. First of all, I'd like to share with you the seeker of the sheep. Let us look at the seeker of the sheep. Right. As we look at verse 11, continue, it says, For thus said the Lord God, Behold, I, even I, will both search out my sheep and seek them out. Amen. Searching out my sheep, is, it, it seems like positive, but then it says to seek them out. It's more emphasis is being placed here now. It goes to the comparative now. And as a, it continues, as a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep, that are scattered, so will I seek out my sheep and will deliver them out of all places where they have been scattered in the cloudy and the dark day. The seeker here is of the Lord. Yeah. It is very clear here that it is God who searches. It is God who seeks out for his sheep. It is not the other way around. Try. When a sheep is lost, when a sheep is hurt outside there, in whatever way that sheep might be, whether it is away from, from the shepherd, it is a shepherd who seeks the sheep. Yes. The, seek, the sheep never seek the shepherd. And so we find he is the one seeking the sheep. It is not the other way around. Man. The unsaved do not care anything about anything on anything godly. Try. Jesus said in John 5.40, he said, you will not come to me that you might have life. You will not come to me. That he might have, have life. Right. And beloved brethren, today you'll find that those with another gospel, brethren, what I'm saying here is simply this. Sometimes you find that they are so active. They are so active. But God's way of seeking his sheep today is by sending his servants out through the highways, through the byways, into the prisons, into the hospitals, sharing tracts, Doing all these sort of things. That is how God seeks a sheep. Mm -hmm. God is not in the business of sending any kind of dramatic visions again. <laughs> right. He's not in these things. He wants for us, God's children, God's sheep here. He, he, our duty is to go out. And I was telling someone a few days ago. There is no greater, no greater way to increase your church numerically. I don't know how we can do it spiritually. That is up to God. But numerically, there is no greater way to increase your church than to go door-to-door -door visitation. Mm -hmm. Talking to people one-on-one. -on -one. 
Nothing takes the place of that. And you bring them in, when you bring them in, God will see, God will do what he has to do to save his sheep. Yeah. So, today you would find though, that those people who seem to have another gospel, a false gospel, they seem to be more active than us. I hope that you would understand the need. You are a child of God. If you are a child of God, you believe that you are saved, then you need to be going out. What are you doing to further the kingdom of God? Right. That's a very important thing. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. We as missionaries sometimes, I know sometimes our supporting churches, they expect a lot from us. When they themselves sometimes are not doing anything. Mm -hmm. But they expect a lot from us. Yeah. I am one missionary. I do not believe I can save any soul at all. Right. There's nothing I can do to save a soul. I know that. Yeah. But I do everything I can to bring them in. I make every effort I can humanly make to bring them where the word of God is being preached. Amen. I know those who are born of God, if it is in God's will, those who are elected of God, if it is in His will, when they come in there, He will see them there. So we make every human effort. Interestingly, you will find that the first word in a great commission is to go. Amen. And that is a responsibility that is placed upon God's people. You know, one of the most saddest things that I when, I, when I consider today, this great commission that Jesus called his disciples in Matthew 28, 18 to 20 there, and he gave that commission to them, and he said, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. He says, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always. That was given to his church. Yes. It was given to his church. It was not given to a Pentecostal or, or a Methodist or a Lutheran. It was not given to them. Man. It was given to the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Man. That church that he had started in Palestine. Yes. So we are the ones who have been entrusted with the commission. Right. The question to us is what are we doing with it? Beloved brethren, we are to take that word out there. We are the ones. God says he will seek out his sheep. But God is not going to walk the streets by himself. He's not going to do some sort of gigantic miracle or something to call people like that. We are his hands, we are his feet. We are the ones he has called unto salvation. Yeah. We are his ambassadors. Amen. And as ambassadors, we, are, we have that responsibility to go. But today's modern theology will have you believe that it is not God who seeks the sheep, but that the sheep must seek the shepherd. But we know that the Bible is very clear. It is the shepherd who seeks his sheep. Amen. For God says in John 6, 44, he says, No man can come unto me except the Father who sent me draw him. Right. And so we know, first of all, that the one who seeks after the sheep, he is a shepherd. But the means that the shepherd is using now, are those of us who are born again. Yeah. That is the means he's using. Amen. Then, secondly, we want to consider the sheep. What are the sheep? Who are these sheep? We look at verses uh, 12 and 13. It says, As a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day that he is among the sheep that are scattered, so will I seek out my sheep and will deliver them out of all places where they have been scattered in the cloudy and dark day. And I will bring them out from the people and gather them from the countries and will bring them to their own land and feed them upon the mountains of Israel by the rivers and in all the inhabited places of the country. Who are the sheep, beloved brethren? They're called His people. Amen. His sheep. In Psalm chapter 100 and verse 3 it says, Know ye that the Lord, He is God. It is He that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are His people and the sheep of his pasture. That's right. Who are his sheep? They are called his people. They are the Lord's own. Amen. Those who are claimed by him and for him. He calls them my own sheep. My own sheep. Can you, can you think about that? The relationship that exists there. One of such affection that he says, my own. It is like a mother cradling that baby in her arms. 
and hugging the baby and wouldn't let it go or anything. This is my own baby. This is my child. Right. That is how Jesus thinks of us. Amen. My own sheep. Amen. John 10 and 3. To him the porter opened and the sheep hear his voice and he calleth his own sheep by name and leadeth them out. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. Amen. My sheep. That is, a, that is a, the affection that God has for us. The sheep of his pasture. And when he seeks his sheep, beloved, his sheep, they come to him. Whenever he calls. In John 10, 27, he says, My sheep hear my voice. Yes. He says, I know them, yes. and they follow me. They are my sheep. They know my voice. When, uh, you know, some time ago, I saw something on Facebook about this, there was this herd of sheep there where the stranger would go and try to call them and the sheep wouldn't even pay any attention to the stranger. But there was a shepherd, the owner of those sheep, when he went out there and his voice sounded out to those sheep, you would see immediately they raised their heads and they followed that voice. Amen. Can you remember the day when the Lord saved you? Can you remember that? Was there any special kind of preaching? Was there any special thing? That was the day God had stuck your ears. And that is the day when you were able to hear his voice coming from the pulpit or wherever it came from. But that is the day that you heard the voice of God saying in your ears, Come, my sheep. Yes. That is the day when you heard that. You surrendered yourself to the Lord Jesus Christ. When Jesus seeks his sheep, they come to him when he calls, beloved. And only his sheep will come. Right. Not others. Right. Have you not seen? I mean, you have been preaching for quite some time. I have been preaching for quite some time. I have been preaching to congregations for years. Sometimes a lot of them, sometimes a few of them. But sometimes I'd see like the Lord would work in one out of that 40 people who were there. Amen. Only one. And I am not the person to... To have lengthy invitations to call anyone forward and make them feel sorry for me. Uh, the preacher is begging you to come. No, I'm not that person. No. I preach my sermon and I trust the Spirit of God to use that as his invitation. Right. But I have seen some time that God would work with one person out of a large congregation. And the others would just, they wouldn't give any heed to the word of God. Why? Because he says... My sheep will hear my voice. Right. And that is what only his sheep will come. Not any others. <laughs> and John 10, 26. I like this. John 10, 26. But you believe not because you are not my sheep. Yeah. Only his sheep will come. Right. But those who are not there, he says, you do not believe because you are not my sheep. As I said unto you, he did not say that because you are not my... He did not say that you are not my sheep because you do not believe. He said, you do not believe because you are not my sheep. That is a clear, clear statement Man. that tells us only there's those with unstopped ears will hear the word of God. Yes. Only those with unstopped ears, they are the ones who would, they would hear the word of God and they would love the word of God. And those, those who have ears, beloved, that are not unstopped, they have eyes that they cannot see, they will not understand the things of God, no way, no way. So therefore, if the, if the seek of the sheep is God, and we are to be used of Him, then in order for us to find the sheep as His servants, we are to go there faithfully preaching the word of God, and do not fear, do not be discouraged, because God's sheep will hear his voice. Amen. Sometimes people tell me, you, you believe in the sovereign grace of God and, and um, you are hard shell Baptist and all these other things. I said, no, I'm not hard shell. I'm a missionary Baptist. Amen. Right? But you believe in election and all these other things. Um, if God has to save them, he will save them. I say, yeah. If God has to save them, he will save them. But I am the means that he has employed to go out mm -hmm. for them to be saved. I am the means to go with the gospel so that they will hear the word of God which will be the instrument God is using 
so that they can say, I believe in Jesus after they have been born again. Yes. Notice the sequence. Mm -hmm. They will say, I believe in Jesus after they have been born again. Mm -hmm. Because the first word, the new birth comes, that new birth comes before you can even confess Jesus Christ as Lord. You get life be before you can talk. If you don't get life, you can't talk. <laughs> it's a natural uh, thing to think of. So, the sheep are the ones who he calls his own. And the Lord's servants are to go to all and to preach. We don't know who are the sheep. But we are to go and to preach to everyone. We are to go with the message whosoever will may come. Yeah. Nothing is wrong. There is an outward call that we the preachers would make. But there is an inward call that the Spirit of God makes. Amen. And that is the one that is effective. Amen. So the Lord's servants are to go to all and preach. And even though we may preach whosoever will may come, we know it is only the sheep will come. Only the sheep. That's right. Not only are they called his people, but they are also called the elect of God. In Romans 8.33, it says, Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It's referring to his people, his sheep. It is God that justifies. And God is the one who elects, not the other way around. I put down something on Facebook today. Um, a part of an outline that I have for unconditional election. And those who say that you're... You are elected because of God's foreknowledge. If they read that, that Facebook post today, they'll know that that's a pack of nonsense. You're not elected because of foreknowledge. God elects them, it is not the other way around. Ephesians 1, 4 and 5, According as he, that is God, had chosen us in him, that is a sheep, before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ, to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. God's people are also called his elect. Right. And we can, we can expand on this so much, but I'm not going to tonight. I am sure you know who are the, what we talk, when we talk about election, what we mean. And God's people are all over the world. Yes. All over the world. It is not limited to race, nor creed, nor color, or any kind of language barrier, or anything. God's people are all over. I'm from Amen. Mm -hmm. And um. I, am sure, I remember as a young missionary when I started coming to the States, some of, I was having a conversation with Larry Robbins. He was the president of the Lexington Baptist College in, in Lexington there. And um, we were talking theology. And while we kept on talking, Larry asked me, he said, you're from the Caribbean. You've never been to a Bible school. How come you know these things? <laughs> so I told him flatly, I said, um, I said, Larry, you know why I know these things? It is the same Spirit of God who is teaching you, is the same Spirit teaching me. Amen. And that is how I think that I will lead to these truths. Nobody had to convince me of these things, you know. Right. The church that the Lord saved me in, the name of that church is Sovereign Grace Baptist Church. There's nothing Sovereign Grace about them. <laughs> Later on I found out that. Yeah. They claim to be missionary, local church believers and stuff. They had open communion. When I came out as a young preacher, I practiced open communion. When I saw I was wrong, I put it to my church, I told them flatly, I said, your pastor has been teaching you wrong. Mm -hmm. And I confessed to them, I asked them to forgive me, and I started teaching them half of the church left and they went. Yeah. But the church needed a bowel movement, yeah. and um, they been, could have stayed back. Been there. <laughs> Roland told me that at the time. <laughs> so, so we look at, the, we look at the, the, the shepherd, we look at the sheep, and thirdly, we want to look at their sustenance. He promises to take care of them. Amen. And I will bring them out from the, the people and gather them from the countries and will bring them to their own land and feed them upon the mountains of Israel by the rivers and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them in a good pasture and upon the high mountains of Israel shall they fall be. There shall they lie in a good fold and in a fat pasture shall they feed upon the mountains of Israel. I will feed my flock, and I will cause them to lie down, said the Lord God. He promises to take care of them wherever they are, whatever part of the world. His care is not limited to any particular place or particular race Amen. or particular level of society. God's care is upon every, every area of his 
creation, but especially upon his elect. Yeah. That is God's care. He promises to take care of us. And we are assured that the promises of God, that they are true. 2 Corinthians 1, 20, for all the promises of God in him are yea, and in him amen unto the glory of God by us. We know that God takes care of the sparrows much more for his sheep. In Psalm chapter 84, verse 3, it says, Yea, the sparrow had found a house, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young, even in thine altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. In Luke 12, 6 and 7, are not five sparrows sold for two farthings? And not one of them is forgotten before God. But even the very hairs of your head are numbered. Yeah. Fear not, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. Amen. If God takes care of the lilies of the field, if God takes care of the sparrows, the birds, everything, all these things, if God, don't you think that He's going to take care of you? Amen. God is going to take care of us. He promised that we're His children. He would never see the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. I have had rough times in my life. Rough, rough times. But God has always come through for me. Always come through for me. He has never left me in any way of destitution or anything. Right. I have been, let me tell, uh, I have a stent in my heart. I left Trinidad, came up to the States. Thursday night I reached in Memphis. Friday morning, 10 o'clock, I was at the hospital in Horn Lake. 3 o'clock in the afternoon, I had a stent placed in my heart. The bill that came up was over $60,000. Right? They okay. talked with me. I didn't ask them for any discount or anything. When they learned who I was, what I was, and it was a Baptist hospital, they forgave me every penny of that debt. Praise I didn't know where I was going to get money to pay. Amen. Right? Amen. They forgave me $60,000. And not only that, Amen. they said that was February the 15th. They said that we are going to give you free medical until all your, your posts, the, 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 the needs that would come up, everything else. They said that they're going, they're going to give me it free until I think it was up in May or something like that. Amen. God has never Amen. left me destitute. Amen. We have this big need that came up here now, all right? And I'm not, I would tell people, I am not worried about anything. If it's in God's will, it will come out to be. So he has promised that he will take care of us. He takes care of the sparrow. He will take care of the sheep in Philippians 4.19. Paul said, but my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. Amen. And then fourthly, and I'll hurry through here now, their security. The sheep is confident of the Lord's security for his sheep. In John 10, 27, when he says, My sheep hear my voice, I know them, they follow me. He said, I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Right. Neither shall man, any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father who gave them me is greater than all, and none can pluck them out of my Father's hand. Beloved brethren, when I consider the promises that are given to us, the sheep too understands that it is secured from the moment of being brought into the fold. He realizes that God is his shepherd from the moment we are coming into the fold of God. In Psalm 23, verse 1, the psalmist says, The Lord is my shepherd. Amen. It's a personal shepherd. He said, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want, I shall not lack for anything. Amen. Everything that is necessary, he is going to take care of that for me. He realizes that by belonging to the shepherd, he's assured of providence, the sure providence of his well-being. Verse 12, Psalm 23. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. When you study that whole psalm, you're going to find. He realizes that as a sheep, he's secured and has personal faith of God, restoring his soul even when he stumbles. For he says in verse 3, he restored my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yes. God's people, beloved brethren, are never left by themselves to fend for themselves or anything. They're always protected by Almighty God. Amen. Listen, anything that happens in your life, everything and anything that happens in your life, if you are born again, there are no accidents in your life. Right. There are no accidents. Everything has a purpose in it. Amen. And the purpose, it is always possible.
positive. You know why? Because you're a child of God. And if you're a child of God, the promise of Romans 8, 28, it falls directly upon you. Amen. All things work together for good to them that love the God, the Lord, to those who are called according to His purpose. Every one of us who are born again, no matter sometimes we go through tough times, but you must be convinced even when you walk away from God sometimes, He restored my soul. Yes. He brings me back. He calls me back. He's the one who does it. Sometimes someone would give you a phone call. Someone, somebody sent a card for you. You get an email sometimes that encourages you. When you are destitute out there in filth, you're living in sin. You are a prodigal son at the time. But then someone, God, somehow God called you back. That's what he does. You know, Brett, lots of time I've seen people who you would think that, you would think that they're demons the way they live. Walk out of church and never want to come back. And then you see one day they come back. There's a young man right there in the church by me. Same Christopher. Same Christopher. He's preaching now for me. Amen. That same Christopher, he walk out. He got married and the, the, the woman, I mean, she just, she's a kind of, in Trinidad we say she's an overpowering wife, a dominating wife. <laughs> and um, he stopped coming to church and suddenly, uh, Earlier last year, he started coming back to church. Yeah. And he confessed to the church and he said that he wants to start back his membership and so forth. And we talked and the church voted to have him back. Yeah. And he'd been there, he'd been preaching recently. He'd been doing a good job too. So the sheep, he realized that he's secured. Also, I had personal faith of God restoring his soul even when he stumbles. He realizes that the sheep is secure and has confidence in God's protection. For he said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Yeah. And he realizes that the sheep is secure and has continued confidence of God sustaining him. For in verse 5 he says, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. And finally he realizes that he has personal security that at the end of it all, he will be with the Lord. For he says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Beloved brethren, I'm saying to you tonight, do not feel discouraged in any way when you find that things are not going your way. Remember who is your shepherd. Yes. Remember who is the one who sought you out in the first place. Remember who is the one who brought you into the fold. Remember who is the one who is able to take care of your every need. Man. For he would never see the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. I thank God for who he is to me. I thank God that in all my ups and downs in my life, that God has been there for me. And when I felt I was all alone, no, he was always there with me. Yes. Beloved brethren, he's always taking care of me. And I tell you, even though needs will arise, and needs do arise, but if you trust in Jesus Christ and your Savior and your Lord, no matter what that means, he will give you what is best for you. Yes. Always give you what is best for you. Never doubt your Savior. Never doubt your Lord. Man. Do not give up hope in anything. Do not ever think that God would leave you in a frustrated way. Never think that God would leave you without taking care of your need. Whatever that need. In time to come, when it's best for you, He is going to take care of it. He is our shepherd. We are His sheep. And no matter what, the Lord cares for His sheep. Only by God's grace, we will be with him. Amen. So what confidence we, are we to have in the gentle shepherd of our souls? We have to think about how wonderful he is to us. Not because of who we are, but in spite of how we are. Right. In spite of what we do, in spite of where we go, in spite of how we talk at times, he still cares for us. And he would never leave us nor forsake us. The message is that God seeks his own. And the question to you tonight is, are you one of his sheep? If you're not a sheep, beloved brethren, you need to come to Him. You need to come to Jesus Christ. Yeah. Jesus Christ left the portals of glory. He died that we might have life. Man. And if you would believe in Jesus Christ, I don't know who's saved and who's not. So most of the time I preach, I always try to end my sermon to tell you the gospel. That Christ Jesus came into this world. He died to save sinners. He died, He was buried, and He rose again. Amen. And because he rose again, if you look to him 
I can assure you upon the authority of the word of God, if you will believe on Jesus Christ, if you're not saved, listen, if you're not saved, you will die and go to hell. There's no two ways about it. Without Jesus Christ, you will die and go to hell. Right. If you are in Jesus Christ, only then are you safe. Only then. Yeah. Lord's willing, this coming Tuesday, I might be able to go and view the ark outside in Lexington, yeah, somewhere around in Lexington, right? When you consider what happened on that ark, all those who were inside the ark were saved. They were blessed by being inside the ark. The only way you can be saved is by being in Jesus Christ. That's right. Without Christ, we are nothing. So I would encourage you tonight, look to Jesus Christ. Always remember that He is the one who gave Himself on Calvary's cross to save poor wretches like you and me. Amen. And tonight, I can say without a shadow of a doubt, to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord for me. Amen. I hope you too have that hope. God bless you.